yes, our morning uh, class. I uh, would like to request someone, maybe somebody who hasn't prayed in a while, to please lead us in a word of prayer today. Anyone? If you could, if uh, you can volunteer, because I'm not sure you know, if you're comfortable where you are, so I don't, don't want to. You know, forcefully volunteer anyone. So anyone who, okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Please go ahead. You can pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless you. We worship you and adore you. Thank you for another time again to be equipped in your word, in the training of your word. Thank you, Lord, for your daughter who you have been using, Lord, to inspire us, to instruct us, to teach us, and to equip us. We pray that this time spent will be worthwhile. We pray for the Spirit's leading and understanding and the wisdom to capture all that will be thought today, to be used for your glory. Thank you, Father, Lord, for a wonderful class and for your presence, O oh Lord, across the internet as we all listen. Thank you, Jesus Christ. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Say. So uh, we were, we had reached the last chapter of this course, um, chapter 10, which is about the raising of the next generation for kingdom service. And uh, we talked about the importance of having successors and to also know that um, without successors, the ministry is not successful because once the leaders who have finished their term are gone, uh, there will be nobody to carry forward whatever has been invested thus far. So it's really important to raise up and prepare to have these leaders carry on God's work. So that's uh, something that we talked about. And then uh, we also said that when we have labored, you know, when we have labored, uh, we are kind of, um, um, wherever we are leaving, wherever we are leaving, that is the starting point for the next generation. So we uh, saw how Paul had uh, raised up many people and particularly we focused in on uh, Timothy, his relationship with Timothy. And uh, we saw how he had trained up Timothy to uh, take over um, you know, the work as per God's destiny for him. So uh, we said that the Timothys of today, we're using that term Timothy for the next generation whom we are working with and whom we are preparing. So the Timothys of today will be the Pauls of tomorrow. Uh, and that uh, the generation which currently is serving must not get all self-absorbed but must um, have the wisdom to prepare that next generation and invest in it so that that's uh, the introduction that we had um, uh, uh, you know kind of spent time in and now we will talk about practical ways of raising up these timothys uh, and these lessons are from uh, paul's relationship with timothy now, Paul, you know, we, we said that uh, he understood that there is a divine connection which he had with uh, Timothy. He found this young man called Timothy in Lystra in Acts chapter 16. And uh, while there could have been several uh, able, committed young men in Lystra, for some reason, Paul picked only Timothy. So in the same way, you know, God may bring in people into our lives and um, 
excuse me by the spirit of god we might sense a special connection with these people so uh, we too can discern by um, god's leading and then select these people whom we are going to invest in so paul identified timothy he realized that god wanted him to equip this young man and then we also see something special that paul did for timothy what did he do the passage is here in our notes on page number 103 where we read that paul took timothy and circumcised him because of the jews who were in that region so why did paul do that you know just earlier in acts chapter 15 there was a, a council meeting where they decided that the rituals such as circumcision need not be carried on by gentile believers but strangely in contradiction to that decision you find paul actually circumcising someone okay and that is timothy the reason being the background of timothy was that his mother was jewish but his father was greek and like a unbeliever so uh, paul felt that timothy would would be regarded by the jews if he were circumcised so he took he took advantage of the fact that uh, uh, you know timothy's mother was jewish so uh, because of that he thought okay how about i go ahead and circumcise him that way in the long run you know when timothy uh, goes around serving in different regions uh, and he knew that you know predominantly timothy's ministry now how did paul know that timothy's ministry will be among the jews uh, i'm not very clear on that but it must be a leading of god so he recognized that this person is going to serve among the jews so why not give him a little more uh, uh, you know uh, of of sort of paving the way uh, just just uh, uh, you know uh, giving him that platform where the jews will stand up and listen to a person who is circumcised because he would come across as a jew to the jews and it would make uh, timothy more acceptable by the jews and thereby timothy's ministry more acceptable so you see how paul was thinking you know paul was thinking long term for that young person uh, and that young person's ministry way into the future now that is how parents think isn't it they think long term for their children and they they um, uh, see you know, what what's what are the things that we can do today for my son or for my daughter so that they will be able to uh, stand up and do what god has called them to do so in the same way paul actually um, thought about timothy and thought about timothy's future and that is why you know, uh, he even went ahead and it says uh, took him and circumcised him so if you look at the the way that has been written in the greek we will understand that he himself did it paul circumcised timothy so he was a uh, careful you know he he was um, awakened to the divine connections that god was uh, making in his life and at the same time you know he was thinking about the future of this um, mentee of his so what lessons lesson do we learn from this we learn that when god sends somebody into our lives you know we must pray for them and also um, you know see how god might want us to um, prepare that person for the future and there are a couple of other passages here in our notes uh, th- these are all talking about the uh, um, uh, uh, these are all talking about uh, the relationship that timothy has with um, uh, paul okay so here we we observe that timothy was very much a part of uh, paul's missionary journeys and the the mission work which he was doing um so you know he would have had an idea of how paul is you know uh, what kind of decisions paul is making um uh, what goals and what um, plans paul has and the principles you know that that paul is uh, living by so timothy had a good exposure to the ministry that paul was doing so that's what we observe in, in some of these uh, passages that are given here 
So in Acts 17, we read that Paul left behind, you know, Silas and Timothy uh, uh, in, in their previous place of ministry. And then he went ahead to Athens. So uh, he allowed Timothy to be exposed to the work of the ministry, which he had started in a previous city. And he knew that that will, you know, build Timothy up. And again, you know, in Acts chapter 18, uh, Timothy was sort of brought uh, to join Paul back in the missionary journey. So you have Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia uh, and Paul was compelled in the spirit. So basically they come and join Paul. So he's very much a part of, you know, Paul's uh, service and uh, journeys. Acts 20, uh, where again, you know, he um, talks about um, his Several, several of the ministers who served together with him, but there is a mention of Timothy as well. So Acts chapter 20 verse 4, and Sopater uh, of Beria accompanied him to Asia, also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby and Timothy, and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. So what's happening? He's basically uh, letting Timothy be exposed to the ministry which he's doing. So you find Timothy you know, at various stages of the missionary journeys. And, you know, he uh, 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 understands Timothy. He, uh, he recognizes Timothy's work. So in Philippians 2.22, you know, he says, but you know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. So one is that Timothy is working uh, with Paul and uh, Paul is allowing him to, to be part of the, the you know, journeys and the ministry assignments that God has uh, given him. And while this is going on, you know, um, uh, he is also aware of the, the attitude and the heart that Timothy has. So he's recognizing that here is a very uh, faithful individual you know, uh, uh, whose character can be trusted. And so while he writes to the Philippians, he kind of uh, affirms that, that this person is a good person. He's a faithful person in the ministry. And uh, uh, when he writes to Timothy you know, for the continuation of his ministry work, you know, he does tell Timothy as well that he too must choose faithful men to carry on the work of the ministry. So you see here, there's a lot of investment going into uh, this uh, person called Timothy. So Paul obviously was quite careful. He picked Timothy out of the crowd. Now, why did he pick him? We see that, uh, you know, when, when we read about um, in Acts chapter 16, we see that, you know, he uh, he was he had a good report okay, and his family. So he kind of had an idea that this person you know, is, a, is a faithful person and that God was making a connection. So he picked Timothy very carefully and that applies to us as well. You know, when we are choosing to mentor someone, we have to uh, see for that divine connection uh, and at the same time, you know, pick the people carefully because there's so much of investment that is really going into this uh, person. The next thing is, you know, faithfulness is more important than ability. I know that, you know, even when uh, uh, human resource recruiters, uh, they recruit people uh, or for a job, they say the same thing, you know, if skills can be taught, but attitude cannot be taught. Now, attitude is something that a person brings with them. Uh, so in the same way, when it comes to the work of the ministry, a faithful heart, a faithful character, it's very, very important. Maybe the person is lacking, you know, in, in skill or ability in some way, but those are areas which one can work on. Uh, but if the character uh, is not lining up you know with with faithfulness then it's very difficult to change one's character so uh, paul was careful to choose timothy who had a proven character and while instructing timothy as well you know, he told him you need to pick faithful men to hand over uh, or uh, yeah, give them the uh, the the work to continue of the ministry. So faithfulness is more important than ability. Uh, and you know, you see that in this journey as well, because obviously when Timothy came on board, he would not have known everything. You know, 
how to deal with people uh, he would not have had sufficient knowledge of the scriptures but you know despite all those shortcomings paul knew that hey the heart is right i can work with this uh, young man called timothy so faithfulness is more important than ability yes and similarly you know condition of the heart is more important than the gifts that one has uh, so we have to be careful in choosing selecting the person that then next thing would be to develop a nurturing relationship now we are aware that paul he didn't call everybody as son and he used that term very sparingly uh, in his epistles but he did call timothy a son so it shows us you know that there was a a closeness in that uh, fellowship there was that closeness in the relationship so 1 timothy 1 2 he says to timothy a true son in the faith grace mercy and peace from god our father and jesus christ our lord so you son in the faith so that's how he um, recognizes timothy uh, and again when he writes to the corinthians and this is what he has to say about timothy i have sent timothy to you who is my beloved and faithful son in the lord okay and look at this who will remind you of remind you of my ways in christ as i teach everywhere in every church so timothy was faithful he was dear to paul so he calls him beloved and timothy was very very uh, familiar with the life of paul now that again reveals to us the um, open and transparent relationship which paul had with timothy so in this manner you know when we have that nurturing relationship a special bond uh, uh, an open um, relationship you know, the the um, person whom we are trying to mentor will be spiritually nurtured okay uh, so let's continue let's continue and see you know all these special features of paul timothy relationship so we need to uh, identify someone carefully develop a nurturing relationship with them establish closeness and transparency okay so about timothy you know he uh, when he writes to timothy uh, in in that letter this is what paul says he says but you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering love perseverance persecutions afflictions which happened to me at antioch at iconium at lystra what persecutions i endured endured and out of them all the lord delivered me so he has uh, allowed timothy to see his life for what it really is and in fact in all this whatever he lists out um, in lystra itself you know when we study what happened to paul they stoned him and uh, it it was really bad that he he was thrown out of the city and he was you know uh, he was lying like it says we are not clear whether he really died or whether he was so injured that uh, he was unconscious we don't know exactly what happened but the conclusion we can draw is it was a very difficult time for, for paul he was uh, you know bruised he he was totally uh, you know kind of uh, injured to unconsciousness by the stoning and this happened in lystra which is timothy's uh, city so timothy has seen paul go through all these things you know before his eyes and he has seen the commitment that paul had for the gospel you know he has seen paul's passion you know he has seen paul's discipline okay despite this and then we see you know the believers came prayed for paul and the next day he went again on his journey so you know it just shows the discipline that paul had he knew hey this is what i need to do and this is what i'm going to do no matter what uh, and uh, come what may he had uh, the the plans that god gave him uh, and then he just went after it and that's the kind of life paul lived and obviously timothy has seen that and that's why paul when he writes to timothy he says look you know me very closely you know my doctrine you know my manner of life everything my faith you know everything so this establishing a closeness and transparency i think it comes over time 
when we are working with someone, um, uh, when you know they they have ample opportunities to observe us. Okay, and the same holds true if we are being mentored by somebody. There's ample opportunity for us to observe. You know, sometimes it's those small things that really show uh, how carefully they are serving God. Okay, so I remember this once. This was uh, uh, I, we have a prayer group. Okay, and on that prayer group, um, every Friday we have these chain prayers uh, that happen. So we. Uh, there are prayer slots that people choose. So um, when, like earlier on, and all this was kind of happening, uh, somebody, one of the one of the women, and I really look up to this this particular person. Uh, she had also signed up for the uh, prayer slots, and it happened to be her and another person for a one hour slot. Okay, and uh, uh, she messaged me later because I was one of the coordinators at that point, and she messaged me later and said, uh, "Hey, I'm not able to take up this uh, slot, so uh, please make a note of it. I hope it doesn't inconvenience the the group and all." So I just said, uh, uh, "No, it's okay, uh, not a problem, because there are two people on the group, so uh, it's fine. Uh, you know, mostly the other person will will." Pitch it. You know, they will do the pray, and therefore the chain is complete because somebody else is praying. So she asked me, "Do you think I should inform the the group on the WhatsApp uh, uh, with the WhatsApp message?" And I said, "No. I I think you don't have to because you know, you've informed me, and that should be fine." Uh, so after a while, you know, she again kind of uh, contacted me, and she said, "Hey, wait a minute. Um, just the way I." You know, I have uh, uh, decided that I am not going to pray during that slot, and I haven't informed others. What if the other person also decides that I'm not able to pray, and then you know, if if they don't inform you, then even you wouldn't know. Nobody would know, and the slot would just go, you know, empty. If everybody thinks like this, if everybody says, "Yeah, I'm not able to do it," but yeah, there are two people or or three people on that slot, it's okay. They'll pray. If everyone thinks they'll pray. Then who will pray, right? So I never really thought about it in that way. But you know, I was really so impressed and blessed to see that, you know, to that extent, she was so concerned that that slot should not go empty. Uh, we have to make sure that you know people are aware, uh, and if not me, somebody else will sign up. You know, I should not inconvenience the group. I should not inconvenience the chain. So. You know, I kind of I took a lesson from that. I thought, oh wow, this is like another level of seriousness for God's work. Yeah, you know, things like that. So we tend to observe, uh, and it's not necessarily a a message with somebody is preaching. Uh, it's it's really their life. It's those small choices. It's those small decisions that people are making that really reveal, you know, the the kind of commitment. that they have and you know i've i've uh, some of the people that i've worked with i've seen like you know sometimes they uh, like all when we have sunday services and you know over the weekends also you know pastoral ministry it gets quite busy okay and so uh, there are some uh, weekends where a lot of things happen maybe it's somebody's uh, uh, baby dedication but there is also a death that is ha- that has just happened so there's a lot of back and forth communication between the team so you now we are preparing for the sermon the previous day but early morning your know, communication is happening you know 5 a.m 6 a.m you just see what seriousness what commitment people have uh, and that is a lesson something for us to learn from so that closeness and transparency that's what i'm saying you know when we are working with people we we begin to see it it starts happening like you begin to see their life for what it is more than their sermons you're just listening to their sermons and uh, what they have to say and these are the things that establish you know that that closeness the way they uh lead uh, god's people the way they deal with us you know the respect and honor which they show uh, you know pe- people around even those who are serving in the ministry uh, it, there's so many notes for us to take from that to really change our own attitudes and our own lives and that's the way in which you find that paul had opened up his life uh, and uh, beyond yes he says you followed my doctrine but beyond that 
Timothy had seen the faith. Timothy had seen the reaction. You know, all these places, Antioch, Iconium, he had, he had uh, like literally uh, mobs. He had uh, so many Jews opposing him. We don't know all the accusations that they made against him and the way they spoke about Paul and what he went through mentally. But Timothy had seen it all. Timothy had seen the reactions, the responses. So that's what uh, he, you know, Paul is talking about. And similarly, you know, when it comes to fathering and mothering people, it's going to take a lot of courage to be transparent. It's going to take a lot of courage to establish that closeness with that special Timothy that God has put in our lives to um, uh, learn and be equipped. So, yeah, closeness and transparency you know, make a huge difference because one realizes that it's about you know life it's about you know everyday decision making okay then what else what else really uh, helped paul mentor timothy communicating specific instructions uh, obviously you know paul wrote to timothy those two epistles uh, and uh, there are so many things that he told him about he was quite you know but particular to the situation of, of Timothy and, uh, you know, his congregation, their challenges and Timothy's personality. You know, it seems like you know, Timothy uh, was probably um, sort of, uh, what do you say, the courage to pastor the church. Uh, that courage could have been affected by the people around so you know, Paul talks to him. That's why he tells him, you know, don't let anyone think that you're young, um, uh, or, or you know that you're not uh, well equipped enough. Because at that time, there were knowledgeable people around in that city, and Timothy could have, uh, you know, been overwhelmed by the fact that you know there are all these knowledgeable people outside. But God has picked me to lead this congregation. How can I do it? You know, I'm not better than them. So. Timothy could have had those insecurities, but you find that you know Paul is addressing specific issues in the church. Paul is specifically encouraging Timothy uh, for the person that Timothy is and his temperament. So uh, we see a couple of things here, specific instructions that he tells Timothy. He says, 1 Timothy 1.18, uh, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. So he's saying, don't give up. There are prophecies that have been made about you and your destiny. I want you to stand firm in it. How are you going to do it? You know, pray them through. Hold on. Wage a good warfare with those prophecies. Don't just give up because of your circumstances. And then, you know, he also says, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. Avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. So while Timothy is facing, you know, all, all these insecurities, he's telling him, no, don't worry about that. You hold on to what has been entrusted to you. You know, the doctrine of God's word, the truth of the gospel. And uh, uh, don't, don't worry. Don't worry about what others know. And he goes to the extent of saying, you know, profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. So you know, he's instructing him to stand his ground with what he has been taught. And in encouraging, in encouraging Timothy, you know, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So basically, Timothy, it seems like you have not received the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So Timothy probably was feeling timid and uh, uh, he was concerned whether uh, you know he, he would make a mess of the ministry that God had given him. So you find Paul encouraging him. You find for Paul telling him not to worry about the people around, but to trust in what he has, you know, the truth of God's word. Uh, just the way, you know, repeatedly God told Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. So just putting that courage into uh, Joshua to lead God's people. Similarly, you find Paul putting that courage back into Timothy and saying, come on, Timothy, you can't give up. Yes, all these things are happening around you, but you have to be firm. Okay, you, you need to stand your ground. So you find Paul 
working closely with Timothy, giving him instructions, encouraging him, and also bringing timely correction you know, wherever it is required. Now, uh, Timothy, uh, you know, obviously he had seen Paul's life, and Paul never made it look like this is going to be. Uh, you know, very easy. Ministry is very easy, or uh, that you know, you start off and you are going to see success, and everything is absolutely fine with you. So he never, uh, in that sense, sweet talked Timothy. Okay, uh, but he was one to uh, speak the truth in love and be firm whenever required. So as you read the epistles and you know as you as you read the communication that paul uh, established with timothy we also find that uh, he was he was very uh, clear uh, and i don't know at any points if timothy felt like why is paul being so stern but you know paul had to do his part of uh, even bringing in correction we already know Ministering correction could be one of those uh, really difficult things you know, in in uh, pastoral sort of a role and uh, uh, especially in yeah, a mentoring relationship. But you know, it's so important, so important. Uh, and correction is like spiritual surgery. Okay? Uh, and when we are dealing with someone, we address matters that have to do with character or discipline or attitude. Uh, it really hurts. It really hurts. Even when somebody that is mentoring us brings up matters and says, I have observed this in you and uh, uh, it's not correct. You need to change it. If we are not careful to correct ourselves in that uh, manner, then you know, that, can, that can really become problematic in the future. Okay? Uh, if there is no correction, then one could carry that attitude throughout their journey, throughout their role as a minister of God. And as God takes them to greater heights, you know, things get worse because, you know, somebody hasn't dealt with that abusive attitude or somebody hasn't dealt with um, the, the wrong way in which they're dealing with money today. So it's a responsibility of a father, a spiritual father or, the, or a mother to bring correction, even if it, even if it is are going to strain your relationship with your mentee, it's the right thing to do. So do that spiritual surgery, even if it hurts, because we know that surgically, if you remove uh, that, that problematic tissue, uh, it is going to yield positive results for the uh, person's physical health. So the same way for the spiritual health. Okay, we also observed that Paul clarified the cost to Timothy. So, um, you know, he showed him everything that he was going through. Uh, and you know, he says, fight the good fight of faith. So even in that itself, we, we, re we recognize that he was telling Timothy that it's not going to be easy. If one has to fight to uh, fulfill their purpose, then it is a tough journey, right? There is a cost attached to it. There is a price to pay. So, uh, Paul was quite clear in that uh, manner and uh, he uh, wanted Timothy to know that uh, this journey is going to be uh, like that of a soldier. In fact, 2 Timothy 2 verses 3 through 5, he says, you therefore must end your hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So he's telling him, it's not going to be easy. And that is what a real father or a real mother does. They will, they will be uh, truthful you know, about the uh, price that has to be paid in God's work. It's not going to be easy. There will be many sacrifices. Uh, you know, there could be some personal sacrifices that one needs to make. But you know, how much are you committed to the call of God on your life? How much are you committed to the, uh, to the, to the truth that you, know, you, you believe? Uh, so... Paul needed to awaken Timothy to that and say, it's going to cost you. Are you ready to pay the price? If you're ready to pay the price, then yes, this is for you. So Paul was clear on that. He revealed to him, he clarified the costs of uh, ministry that God had called Timothy to. And also, you know, we see that uh, Paul was careful to place honor 
okay uh, on timothy's life so we see how he he spoke about them he spoke highly about them you know what happens when uh, we are in a mentoring relationship and we are working with a mentee who's just um, you know improving in in different areas uh, of ministry attitude and all of that we know their weaknesses isn't it so it is easy for us to uh, look at that person as you know somewhere that person is not as good as us or look at them you know they are full of weaknesses look at them this could have been done uh, very easily but that person is not able to do it well or oh, so and so lacks discipline so we can come up with all these judgments and really look down on the people whom we are building but paul always had a positive word of recommendation for timothy i'm sure paul knew the weaknesses of timothy now i'm sure uh, maybe you know even much better than timothy paul was aware and yet he always put a, a good word about timothy you know when he spoke about him 1 timothy 6:11 but you even to timothy he says but you o man of god flee these things and pursue righteousness godliness um, okay once again yeah faith love patience gentleness so you see how he's addressing timothy here he did say mm, uh, uh, hey you or uh, you know you young man o man of god okay so when paul is understood yeah this person he is also committed uh, he will make for a good minister he is a faithful minister of god he will uh, you know uh, pursue this journey and he will serve god what how does paul begin to address timothy he says oh man of god now coming from a mentor it's a big deal that a mentor calls a mentee oh man of god but that's the honor that paul is placing on timothy for journeying along in this uh, in in this path of ministry so oh man of god that's how paul calls timothy and then when he writes to the corinthians he says timothy our brother okay that's again you know something that uh, we don't expect he could have said oh, i am sending you that that boy timothy timothy our brother okay so there is honor in that the way paul is addressing timothy uh, philemon he says uh, paul a prisoner of christ jesus and timothy our brother you know again he says timothy our brother in the book of romans he says timothy my fellow worker so these are all the ways in which you know paul is uh, uh, addressing timothy and you know when somebody like paul recommends a person like timothy you know as a brother as a fellow worker my son what happens in the sight of others you know they are also like wow this guy must be something you know for paul to call him uh, my son and my brother and all of that so you know he is talking of timothy as a son and earlier when we talked about mentoring he said that when we treat people like servants you know uh, they will grow up to be servants and they will treat uh, us as masters okay however when one is treated like a son then they know that they grow up to um, serve that family of believers as if it were their own household so they bear responsibility in that way uh, and we see that uh, uh, you know that son mentality son mentality where one knows that by serving what is my reward what am i going to get i am really going to get that spiritual inheritance which is a blessing uh, and uh, it's not about me getting recognition or a position in this place or uh, you know any of that or even uh, being spoken of highly by my mentor that's that's not the the result uh, what i'm looking for and i'm looking to really grow in god to really fulfill my ministry and to serve the the people of god and to serve the 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 fathers and mothers who have poured into me and um, you know bring honor to god's kingdom so that is the son mindset so when we treat people like sons 
they will turn out to be some sons and daughters but when we treat people like servants so they will develop that servant mentality so you know jokingly uh, we uh, say this that sometimes you know in ministries the timothys they they just become some sort of assistants for the pastor you know like uh, if you can imagine you know, there's a there's a pastor and then he's coming up to the pulpit to uh, share his sermon and then there are these two timothys walking behind him one timothy is holding the briefcase one timothy is holding the mobile phone uh, you know and basically they are just like these bodyguard assistants for the pastor and if the pastor treats them just with that much uh, he looks at them as yeah okay you know you're good enough to hold my bag and you're good enough to hold my mobile and you're just good enough to do all the things that i'm telling you to do that's what they will end up uh, you know growing into but uh, mentoring fathering um, uh, developing sons and daughters is way beyond this way beyond this uh, and it's a it's really a wake up call for us as uh, you know people in the kingdom whoever it is that god sends us as as younger people in in his house whom we have to nurture but never treat them like a servant like hey you do my job or i'm delegating delegating it to you do it you know that servant attitude must must uh, we should get rid of it because that's not how paul treated timothy he definitely treated him with a lot of respect and with honor yeah so we come to the next uh, aspect here delegate and empower so one of the ways in which we can really equip uh, um, the people that god has um, given given us to mentor is by uh, equipping them okay is by um, helping them discover their own gifts their own strengths you know the grace on their lives and all that for that they need exposure so uh, we can we can help them discover their own strengths by um, showing them you know where they can serve so delegation is helpful so we what delegation means you give somebody an assignment to do or you give them a task to work on you give them a work you know to to perform so what happens when that person is doing it they realize wow hey i'm actually anointed for this or it could be the other way around they figure out that this is not for me you know media is not for me uh, i am meant for something else maybe i i am meant for uh, administration so you you're delegate you're giving them responsibility and we've already seen in building people by the spirit we said that uh, we have to recognize what is god's call on that person's life now if that person is called for administration then you try to give them tasks in line with their grace so then what happens it builds confidence they keep doing the small little tasks and then you know uh, they find out that they're good at it god has given them a vision for this you know uh, and and god is bringing in more people to serve in that ministry so there's actually growth there's flourishing and what does what that does to them is that it really empowers them it empowers them it equips them and then you know before you are gone they are in a better position they've had enough and more experience in that area and uh, whether you are there to give them instructions or not they kind of comfortable they know what needs to be done and they are able to carry out god's work so delegate or give them responsibilities we've seen you know how paul took a timothy along in his missionary journeys then it's not that he finally handed over the church and said okay timothy you be the pastor it didn't happen like that but throughout the journeys we saw with silas he left timothy in one of the churches that he had planted so obviously timothy would have done the ground work he would have figured things out made some mistakes <laughs> all of that had some exposure and even developed some confidence and then you know again on the journey paul and white silas and timothy came and joined uh, paul in one of the other cities where he was ministering so again for timothy gets to observe paul and paul would have given him tasks to do so in this manner over a period of time he was actually empowering he was delegating tasks and empowering timothy and that really made a difference in timothy's life so we must excuse me we must delegate um and give responsibility to people that is the way in which you know people will grow and mature so one of the things that you know we do here at apc is 
Um, there's lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities to volunteer uh, as the Lord leads. You know, we kind of encourage people, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And it's not because, you know, we need people to get work done. That's the last reason. But it is more like, hey, this person, if, if they get this exposure, they will grow. Okay, in what God has called them to do. So lots of responsibility, lots of opportunities are there. And constantly we need to think, okay, how can I how can I correctly connect you know, these people, a person to a particular task so that they will uh, discover their own gift, grace, and be empowered. So that, that is one thing. And also, you know, mission trips. We have mission trips and uh, uh, we'll see like in the next year, those who are here in India and who can travel um, uh, comfortably and maybe be a part of a mission trip. Let's see if we can uh, do something about our Bible college students as well. So just in discussion with Pastor about that. So these mission trips, we invite people from church to go on mission trips. Uh, generally, there is a, a, a pastor or a ministry leader who's also a, a part of the team uh, and, you know, Young people join along, uh, people who've never been on a mission trip also. But there is a training, there is a, some guidelines that we take people uh, through because we want them to have the right mindset when they go on these mission trips. But we take them along. So when we take people along, what happens? Well, they get to see the, the actual circumstances under which ministry is done. Okay. Uh, many of these places, some of us uh, on this call also, if you've been to a mission trip, you know, you land up there and one of the mission trips, there was no water. So can you imagine you know, not having water uh, and uh, you just have to manage with the bare minimum. So many people have come for a conference. It's not easy. And sometimes it's so hot. You know, I remember one mission trip where we went with our young people. The moment we landed there, they were exhausted. The youth, they're like, are you telling me this is the weather? Like we have to we have to survive in this weather for three days. We were like, yeah, this is what missions is all about. You know, and I remember another place where the the water in the um, uh, bathrooms was overflowing. Like you couldn't go in, you couldn't go in. It was such a mess. Uh, people who are used to living a very comfortable city life. You go to some of these rural places and you're shocked. You're like, this is crazy. I, I, I don't know if I'm ready to deal with all this. But you see, these are the circumstances under which you know, ministry is being done. But at the end of the day, you know, we're able to, uh, um, like the, the people who are serving there, we're able to show people that, hey, come on, we can still preach the word. We can still relate well with people. We can still build people up. Don't worry about the, the, you know, the comforts around you. We are here to serve God, no matter what. And we can do this. So there are young people who have been part of these mission trips. And sometimes even now when they, when they uh, talk about their journey at APC, you know, they talk about the exposure to a mission site. And they say, wow, you know, just one trip, I learned so much. I observed how how um, uh, you know those those who are serving God are serving in those difficult situations. So the point is, Paul took Timothy along. He wanted Timothy to experience and uh, you know uh, serve. He delegated responsibility. He wanted Timothy to figure things out, right? As he was doing those assignments, so. All these things really help when we are building people up. If it's just, okay, I'm lecturing you and uh, I will preach sermons to you Sunday after Sunday. A part of the impartation is done through that. But, you know, there is this other aspect of really, uh, you know, letting people have that hands-on experience. Uh, and it's when people get into stuff, you know, they are serving, they are volunteering, they are going on mission trips, you know, they're preparing to share you know, God's word. They recognize and realize, wow, this is, this is something God has really called me to do. And I can uh, experience the anointing. You know, there have been young people, they, uh, they, we, when we ask them, okay, come now, you minister. 
suddenly they get a word of knowledge and they are like wow i never knew that uh, god can use me to um, you know share a word of knowledge so delegate give them responsibilities because if we just make people uh, sit on the pews and only listen 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 uh, learning doesn't happen you know in a complete way and paul knew that and that is why he he did teach timothy but he also let timothy learn many things on the job okay so let people be exposed to uh, uh, all these things mm, oh i have overshot time but please bear with me i'll i'll uh, quickly finish i think we will not have another hour because we are almost done with this chapter now uh, and yes the next thing here is to recommend positively uh, when we speak about the people that we are mentoring you know we we speak uh, good of them okay we don't put them down uh, before others and when it is the right time to you know, release them we see paul do that it was time for timothy for paul to uh, go away and you see that in paul's writings to timothy he says my time has come i have to go quickly and i've already um, you know i fought the good fight but i want you to fight it now so release them into their destiny when it is time then they will take over and they will lead from that point so whenever we are working with our uh, timothys we have to bear that in mind we are preparing them to stand you know by themselves uh, and uh, not really you know just giving them tasks to get something done that's not the idea okay and when uh, one as a father or a mother a spiritual father or, or a mother uh, is you know done with the work that god has called them to do you know in the sunset years it's always good to share wisdom now the experiences that one has had in the ministry you know, that it will be so uh, valuable to you know uh, impart that to the younger ones so that is also something that we must uh, keep in mind um, and uh, you know uh, when let's say a, a, a senior pastor is retiring so he could probably engage a lot more in meeting with young people meeting with younger ministers or you know sharing his experience uh, in different ways maybe in a conference or a book or you know this way or that way just imparting it to others so that the others also uh, you know can learn from it and run well and of course you know uh, when one is done with their time of ministering um, it doesn't mean that the anointing is gone isn't it maybe there's a different kind of a grace in that season of our lives and a different anointing so we can keep that fire alive and serve god in a in in a way uh which god has called us to do in those you know old age years or our uh, uh you know sunset years uh, and we can still continue to bear fruit because scripture tells us that in psalm 92 and verse 14 they shall still bear fruit in old age they shall be fresh and flourishing so a mentor or a father or a mother can still continue to give from their lives and be ready to depart with grace so grace meaning uh, having done an honorable work having been true to the call of god on one's life so you know, we we live um, in a in a way that glorifies god okay? very gracefully we are willing to step out of our role let the younger ones take over and uh, let the kingdom of god continue so we come to the end of uh, this last chapter here and actually i had in mind that we can all uh, i have posted some questions for the second assignment on the uh, google classroom uh, with the last day so you could work on it i had in mind that you know you can write the assignment and maybe you can share as well in the class uh, but you know what do you all say for that uh having something it's not a presentation but just sharing there are four questions so you could pick any one of those and uh, very briefly maybe a maximum of 5 minutes you could present to the class uh but then i know we're all from different time zones if connecting to the class is somewhat cumbersome uh it's okay to just write the assignment and submit as well but i wanted to know your uh you know your view do you think 
uh, sharing it, speaking it uh, is, is a good thing or what would you prefer? Just writing the assignment and submitting. Good morning, Fasta. Um, yes, yes, good I'm morning. I'm happy with speaking because it gives me opportunity to practice uh, speaking before okay. people. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, fine. 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 Okay. Yes, Charles? Okay. Yes, Charles? Uh, even me, speaking. Speaking is better. Speaking is uh, better. Regardless of the time zones, we have been doing it. We did it we, in the... Um, uh, the New Testament survey, we have done it with biblical preaching. We, we've been doing it. So uh, it's, it's good. It's good. If you continue to give us okay. more guidelines on how it can be done, then we would love to do that. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, okay. Mm. So uh, I just want to know uh, how many of us are comfortable with speaking. If you don't mind, could you just do the raising your hand? Uh, could you press that so I see how many hands are raised? How many of you prefer to speak? So if that's the majority, then we will go with speaking. Okay, I'm looking at it. Yeah, how many for speaking? Um, I would also like to speak to. Yes, Isaac. I will also choose speaking. Speaking. Okay, so you could raise your hand. There's a symbol for raising of the hand. Could you please uh, okay. click on that? Because I'm counting here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay, so eight hands are raised. Uh, the others are not. <laughs> so there's 27 of us on the call here. Okay, that, so nine, nine people. Nine people. Who else? Okay, Kennedy joined the team, I think so. Okay. Okay, it looks like uh, some of you want to speak and the others don't. So I'm just wondering how to do this. Speaking is more appropriate for me. Okay, okay, all right. Ma'am, mm, yes, I mean, this is how you know we uh, we will be able to know each other's perspectives here from everyone's, and we learn like uh, a lot because uh, assignments we give it to you, and we don't know what is the other person uh, sharing about that particular thing, mm. their perspective, their inputs. So uh, through sharing, you know, we we can exponentially understand everyone's uh, overview. Mm -hmm. that's that's one thought uh, that i wanted to share not yeah sure Otherwise, sure fine mm -hmm. okay so in that case uh uh sh shall we see i've given four questions there the google classroom um but if you're going to speak it Okay, uh, so let's do this. It will be a little, uh, you know, tedious for, for you. Out of the four questions, um, you can decide to speak any one. Okay, there's a question on mentoring. There's a question on, uh, uh, you know, what you have learned uh, about kingdom building and what you would like to follow. Mm, so... Uh, that there's a question on partnering in the kingdom of God, and there is a question on citywide church. So there are four questions. I will just leave it open to you. Whichever question you uh, want to speak instead of instead of uh, write, uh, then you can please you can please do that. Uh, so the rest of the three questions you will need to write and submit. Is that okay, everybody? One question can be answered through a presentation is that okay or is that doubling up your work because you have to write also and you have to uh, speak also 
yeah i think people are okay with that okay so whichever question you choose to speak i will mark you as per the marks allotted over there i will mark you uh, uh, you know for your speaking suppose somebody is okay let's make this mandatory everybody has to speak one uh, un to answer one of the questions if you are unable to speak then please write me a private note as to why you are unable to speak okay uh, and then uh, i can figure out individually with you but otherwise one question out of the four you need to speak okay and we will begin in the next class so those of us who are ready please post on the google classroom you know that you are ready so then i can schedule people uh, so we we have an idea otherwise you know we we'll, on that day we'll try to schedule and it will be a big mess so if you are ready time limit can be 6 minutes 5 5 plus 1 so you speak for 5 minutes uh, and uh, suppose you know there is a little more you want to add to it you can make it 6 minutes okay all right so yeah let's let's go with that then uh okay so the the second hour today we will not have since we have completed uh, i would suggest that you look at the questions you can spend this next hour by thinking about the questions and those of us who are ready please post on the google classroom and say that i would like to share in the next uh, um, class which is next tuesday so then i can schedule so 9th 9th of november those of us who are ready kindly post on the google classroom so we'll schedule those who are ready and the rest will do it on the following and we'll try to wrap it up we'll try to wrap it up on the 16th so only two more tuesdays we will have presentations not more than that so we'll close it on the 16th okay all right so uh anything else class anything you wanted to share discuss okay samuel is asking how long at time 5 plus 1 samuel 5 minutes if you go over slightly maybe 6 minutes so yeah that's how much time you have when do classes resume uh but for this course we are the classes are done the lectures are done the next two tuesdays is going to be the presentation time or oh, the next course ha huh. next course uh i think first week of january usually we we start off the first week one second let me see the calendar here in any case there will be an announcement yeah i i think first or second week of january uh, and you'll be informed that Yeah, is that okay? Okay, sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, class. So, if there are no questions, uh, we are good to wrap up. Any questions? Yeah, I think it's quite clear. Okay. So I would like to request someone to please pray uh, before we end this call. Who would like to pray? Shall I pray, ma'am? Yes, yes, Abhi. Father God Almighty, with a thankful heart, and Father with a with a joyful heart, Father, as we complete our semester here, Father, we thank you for leading us through, Father, helping us with your grace and mercy to go through, learn such profound things, Father, and whatever we have learned, Father, may it grow in us. The seed that has been sown, Father, may it be watered well. and by the grace and mercy of your power of your holy spirit and by the uh, the the everything that you have provided everything that you give us father it helps us father and we just want to thank you for that this platform our teachers their burdens father the the content that we have learned father a lot of hard work has been put in father 
And Father, help us to be nurtured in faith as we read it, as we meditate on it, as we grow in it, Father. Let your will be done, Father, through each of our lives. Let the lives be used for your glory in every area, in every city, in every nation, in every locality, wherever we are, Father. We may all be used for your glory, Father. And let every word and seed sown in us yield multifold fruit for your kingdom purposes, for your glory, Father. Lead each of us, fill each of us fresh this morning, Father, as we prepare for our assignments. Give your grace and mercy, Father, that we would be able to do uh, well, Father, and understand things more than uh, just doing it for the sake of it, Father, but understand things in deeper sense. And uh, Lord, Father, be able to encourage each other, help each other, and Father, continue to grow the local church and uh, serve in the local church with a heart full of uh, uh, gratitude and let your kingdom be uh, spread on this earth through each of our lives, Father. Bless everyone. We thank you for all our teachers, especially ma'am, that she has been teaching us with so much of joy and so much of patience. And Lord Father, we just want to bless her with uh, more and more anointing to touch the lives that come across, Father. Once again, we thank you for this platform. We thank you for your presence amidst us while we were learning, Father. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for every promise that we stand upon. And Lord, lead us and guide us in days to come in like never before, Father. And as we finish, Father, let this, uh, this uh, fellowship continue in the Spirit uh, as you are leading us, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise for who you are and how you're leading us. We thank you once again for APC Bible College, for all the teachers and our pastor. And we thank you for everyone, Father, who is part of this beautiful journey and beautiful mission. Uh, we give you glory, honor, and praise and ask this prayer in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ami, and thank you, everybody. God bless you. Uh, yeah, so glad we reached the end of this uh, book. Yeah, would love to hear your uh, insights from the next class onwards. So take care, all the best for your preparation. Bye for now.